Hello and welcome to Farming Simulator. I'm Andy and this is Let's Play on the Shamrock Valley. So today we're going to start our harvest, so at least this massive Ferguson with the header and everything. Stuck on it, not stuck on it, with it. So we're going to just put it on the header trailer over there and then we'll take, go up to our field. Basically, and we'll start some harvest. Where's the middle? Here's the middle again. Here's the part where I'm almost not 100% sure where to drop it off. Maybe there? Ooh. Okay. It worked. That's good. Uh, I think I got slightly too big of a head header, actually. So we'll do field one first, I think. Which is up here on the left. I guess the road up here so we can get to it. Oops, sorry. Okay, so I'm really wide, I'm sorry about that. So as I talked about on the last episode, the idea is to uh, just harvest this and sell it. And then we'll probably not make, make a ton of money, but we'll get a bit of... Um, um, not hay. What's the word I'm looking for? Not hay. Looking for the word straw. We will get a bit of a straw. A bit of straw. Let's go here. Weird, why do you do that? Oh, oh, never mind. Anyway, oh, Jesus, why oh, isn't there a fair? Try to like call thieves on this map. Okay, I hope everyone is having a good day out there, or a good start of a day. Um, let's see, have to turn this so you can connect it the right way. Mm, let's see, we have to, I'll put it in there, and I think I'll... Pretty sure this is not the way you would do it in real life. Oh, this is where I'm doing it on this map, at least. Go 
let's hook this up here. And we'll drive this away. Long way. I don't know if this is so well, maybe down here. I was thinking like there's a place I could put it so it would be out of the way. I guess that's or steep. So let's see. Um disable stroths. No, we want stroths sloth, so Unfold. Start. Good. Okay, now we have a straw swap spot, so it's good. best of this doing this because I find it's kind of hard to see where the edge is in compare in in compared to where the edge of the head header is so it's not the best of this We haven't so this field isn't fertilized or anything, I think. So I don't think it's fertilized, so maybe it is actually it looks a little, little bit like it would be fertilized. But anyway, so uh, anyway, we need to bring out down the um, tractor other tractor with the trailer on it so we can unload this when it gets full but we'll do that in a bit so we haven't lost a lot it cost like 16 grand or so first hour an, an initial cost for this so about eight thousand an hour then late for every hour we use it so that's pretty okay we have the money so that's not a big deal the header was kind of cheap um to rent so it was And so was the header trailer, so no biggie there. I wish I had, I should probably install the GPS on this map or something. Right, maybe the GPS mod. You can do it from the outside also if you wanted to. It's a bit easier to see where the edge is compared to the header. So this way we'll get some straw and then we'll do... I could install the buy a bale mod but I sort of decided that I would try to do it without the buy bale mod. So um, I should probably get a trailer so I can pick up grass for, and turn that into silage. Let's see here. This is a smaller of the fields. I think th number three is pretty big over there. But we'll get to that one. First we have to finish this one. <laughs> so I have had this idea that maybe I shouldn't 
who would do it with mods on this map. Just use the default ones and maybe a few like, like the tractor package I have installed and maybe a few mods, but not a ton of mods. Mods are fun. I don't I like mods mods. That's not that maybe Damn it, what's the wrong way? It's like turn but it was turning the wrong way. Uh, so as I said, not a ton of mods, a few mods, but um should probably just stick with those mods. Be content with that. I don't think I could actually install the AI combine thing. That, that's pretty. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it because I, uh, most of this map will be pretty much. Um, what I call uh, grass work, basically. So installing the AI combine mod is probably pretty useless. So we don't have a ton of fields and we're not going to do a ton of work with those on those using the combine. So I'll, well, I'll stick to this. But the GPS mod might be good. But you wouldn't have a GPS mod in, in also the old style tractors we use. In the Massey, that, that would be possible, I guess. But the rest, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, no. Let's see. At this end, it looks kind of small the field but on the other end it looks kind of big so interesting I wonder if Shamrock, Shamrock Valley is sort of based on something realistic um, I have no idea so I don't know if, if, do you know? Lick or um, SP Farmer do you know if this is based on a real map? Uh, I have no idea. I was thinking I should probably do like a live stream, but the problem is that when I can do live streams, but I'm not sure people can watch them. It's either late at night here, which will be like in the middle of the day in, say, US, or it's really early, which, oh, well, I guess really at the time I'm recording this is in the morning, about 6 o'clock. Um, local time, so that would be uh, like like an evening in the states. So that actually might work. So I guess it could work actually. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. I'm not saying anything, I'm deciding anything. I'm just doing this. Um, lots of people do live streams. I mean, um, Delta Bravo Production you, you usually do live streams and stuff. I, I think that's in, fine, cool. I would like to do it, but I just have a hard time planning those. I usually get to record when I have a little bit of time over. I can't really decide that. With two work, two kids and studies and everything, it's I don't, sort of... I always have a ton of stuff to do, basically. Um, oh, unfortunately. But oh, I don't know. so any plans for the weekend? I'm I'm recording this Friday morning. Uh, you watching it Sunday morning, I think. 
if I remember correctly. And did you have a nice weekend? Sorry, I was going to ask you if you have any plans for the weekend, but that seems silly when the weekend is pretty much over, over when you see this. Well, not pretty much, you have an entire Sunday left if you watch this and when it's released in the morning. But um, I don't have much plans. I would like to sleep. It's pretty much. Seems like the. Nowadays, that seems like the only real. Um, not claim. Claim is the wrong word in that sentence. Um, seems like the only real thing I want is the possibility to sleep a little bit longer on weekends. And I'm not talking long. I'm talking like seven o'clock, maybe half past six. That would be cool. So that's full. Let's go and grab our this one. Our TW twenty. F it's, it's not twenty-five. It's thirty-five. So this is a four-wheel drive compared to the other Ford, which is a two-wheel drive. There's, we don't need a ton of stuff on this farm, I think. I have some stuff, but I don't think we need too much stuff. Stuff we have works pretty nicely. And I actually was sort of not sure that we needed two of these tractors. For two track no, actually we have three tractors. Seem three seems a little bit overkill. But now I think it's probably good now when you look at well, I, I could use massive stuff. But it's good. these aren't very kind of cheap, so I won't don't mind having them having them around. The one problem though, which I suddenly realized, how am I going to return the massy? The problem is you can't get it into. That's really drawback with this map actually. If you look at, oh, let's see, where are we? Where's the store? It's here, right? So here's the store. I need to go around it. They can buy stuff. But you sell it here. The problem is, how am I getting Massey in here? I'm not going to be able to get the Massey in here. I'm well, I guess I'm going to drive really, really fast, maybe. I'm not sure, maybe this extends actually out here. If he thought it through, I guess it, it probably extends here, so you could probably put it here and then still sell it. But otherwise we are in deep problem, deep, it's gonna say crap. I was gonna say the other word actually, but I'm not gonna say that. This is, this is actually nice. Nice one. I just took a screenshot of the of this. So is it? What else is going on in my life? Seems like I do a lot of study. So I'm currently doing a class in law, which is really interesting. I'm learning a lot, even though it's mostly the stuff I already do every day. But um, it's good to learn things, and I'm actually I'm learning stuff every day. So which is good. I'm I'm getting better. Also, there's a nice. You all, all, always find out sort of the, the discrepancy between um, uh, what law actually does and say, and what is possibility in reality. We were talking about this yesterday. The teacher made a good point, which I totally agree with, and it wasn't a new point in my world, but 
he, we had this case, like fictitious case, where we're going to decide if there was uh, the requisites for the law to force someone to be uh, undergo um, substance abuse uh, care. If there was uh, the requisite in law was fulfilled, and uh, the teach, I was sort of, I went into practical mode, and I thought, oh no, it's not good enough. And the teacher made a point that, well, actually, if you just look at law and you combine combine all of the factors, by law, this person w should be um, under treatment, forced to go undergo treatment. Um, but then he also made a point that the problem is that in real life, it doesn't look like this. You wouldn't spend the money on that person. It sounds harsh, but you wouldn't spend the money on that part person because it costs a ton of money. And if we did follow the law, we wouldn't be able to treat people because we, all of the places at the facilities that do this sort of treatment, which is stately, uh, state, uh, because it's forced, everything that has to has to force is always has to be under government rules in Sweden. You can't like have a private person, private company that does that by law. Anyway, so, um, and he said that, which I agree on, um, that we uh, were to follow the law, then we would fill up all those spots or places uh, in treatment with people that weren't really, really dying from their substance abuse, which would mean, which is, there's no requisite by law that you have to do that. Uh, actually, they were quite the opposite. But um, you would then find yourself without a spot when you really needed one. So w when you would get a substance abuse a person that su uh, suffers from substance abuse that is really dying from it, then you would have no spots for that person, which is basically what's happening already. And we're not even close to utilizing the law in the way that the lawmaker said it would be should said it should should said that it should be used. So, so by not following the law, we're still having problems to finding spots. For instance, if I have a teenager that is uh, sort of in, I say t there's more, more rec rec requisites, but if we say um, the requisite uh, uh, substance abuse, uh, if I have a teenager that is in really deep prob has deep problems with that and, and almost dying from it, which happens, then and it doesn't want he or she doesn't want to care. I I can place them in other places, but if they keep running away there, then I need to place them in a, on a locked ward, and that's always run by this, the government, and by the government, the authorities, the states, not the states, the state of Sweden, I guess. Um, and if I want to do that, there's a three-week <laughs> three week, week waiting for a spot. On average, I could be, get lucky and get a few one within a few days, but that won't happen. I think they they currently it's about three weeks. So if I have someone dying now, I need to lock up now. I have to wait three weeks. See the problem? It doesn't really add up. So you, you tend to not try not to use those spots. Well, you can't you can't use those spots. There was actually a few years ago, or maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago, was uh, my hometown was the town of Sweden. I don't live there anymore, but my parents live there, and my, uh, my sister lived there. Lives there. And, um, there was this, they, the authorities actually used um, the law that, that can be utilized when, uh, with the grown-up substance abusers, and they, but they couldn't find a spot for him. So, he got. They used this law, and they couldn't place him anywhere. So he got released, of course, right, because you have to place them somewhere. And then it went like, I don't know, three months or so, and then he died because there were no spots. And this is an ongoing problem. And, and the, we don't overproduce spots. We need to. If you if you're gonna have that kind of law, we need to basically overproduce the amount of places or spots you can play, have because you, you, sh you should never run out of sp uh, spots. The problem is we don't want to pay for that so and this is not a... Uh, my, if you look at the law this is a, a group of people that are definitely prioritized by the government but in, in reality 
when it comes to budget, they're not. So there's a real big discrepancy between the way uh, we want to treat, want to work with these, these, this sort of problems in society, and the way we actually are working with it. So I'm not saying that's wrong or right. I'm just saying that's the way I look upon it. I'm not saying this ton of stuff needs to be worked on and, and changed in Sweden. That doesn't mean that the view that Donald Trump, for instance, has of Sweden is correct. That's sorry, he has no freaking idea what Sweden is, or what we do. He could probably not place a pin on the map pointing out Sweden. So, and if you take your cues from Fox News, you probably should change your channel. That's my suggestion. Anyway, Sweden is a really, really great country. We have. We have problems, every country has had problems, but the thing is we have a, also a deep tradition of handling problems by looking on the facts, looking at the knowledge base, looking at research, and then coming to nice and easy, calm conclusion by doing, uh, doing it calmly and pr uh, structured and professional. We come to a conclusion what to do. Which is pretty great, in my point, uh, like in my book, anyway. It's better than overreacting and just doing things because of the feelings. Uh, there's still a, there's a movement in Sweden that I find really awkward or weird. Is that some suddenly people are talking about? Well, that people feel unsafe. We have to do stuff. People feel unsafe, and to me that's weird because the government should do stuff that works. And if people feel unsafe. Well, that's sad, but it doesn't mean they are unsafe. So I don't want I don't want to feel safe. I want to be safe. There's a really big distinction there, um, to me at least. But um, a lot of politicians go with the feeling stuff. And it's like, oh, we have to make people feel feel good. No, we don't have to make people feel good. We have to make people be good. Or we don't have to make them. We have to. Feel feel safe. No, they don't have to feel safe. I'm sorry. People don't have to feel safe. That's not a right, right to feel safe. They have to be safe. That's a distinct and being safe. But the problem is that being safe, if you look like the statistics, local statistics here, people have in the last few years felt so much more unsafe than before. The problem is they are people here aren't unsafe. If you look at the statistics getting, having, being, um, abused, victim of crime it's pretty much the same as the last it's been the last 10 years so suddenly the feeling of being safe has dropped substantially but we are just as safe if you look even if you look at a number of different statistics which you need to do to be correct but uh, politicians are called sort of racing in to oh we have to f make people feel safe and feel good and feel everything it's like no we don't have to make people feel sick we have to make people are or is that's the difference but hey, uh, not, not a lot of people f for some reason a lot of people feel like they should feel good and be s feel safe and that crap i have another point of view i think that people should be safe but hey, that is just my five, five cents. Um, some people would argue that there is a, a sort of connection between the two, feeling safe and being safe. And I would totally agree with that. But somehow nowadays, it seems like that connection has gotten w much weaker. Because that's the only way you can explain why. Let's see if I, can get, do I, can I think I go up here. Um, I, I have no other explanation of why people are just as safe but feel unsafer. Well, there's, of course, there is a ton of explanations why this happens. I mean, um, for instance, media has a big role in it. Um, if you have media outlets that constantly sort of pushes um, dangerous ideas, not dangerous idea, that you know, news about da dangerous things happening and news about people being victims of crime, then people will feel unsafe. It's quite logical actually. 
but it's still problematic. I feel like we really can give this back. I'm not sure. How many minutes have we recorded? Oh, well, 30 minutes. Okay, I should probably stop here. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching. Um, let's see. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see what we'll do next time. Probably continue this or something else. So, I'm Andy. Um, if you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this episode, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share. Um, and we'll see you next time on Shamrock Valley. Bye-bye.